21st of February 2022. For most of 34 million people of Ukraine, time stopped flowing. Dawn in a European capital. A missile hits a block of flats. Here we are on the 26th of February 2022, being a third day of Russian aggression against Ukraine. Country that has been struggling economically ever since I can remember. Country that was slowly and hesitantly moving towards the West, meaning distancing from Mother Russia. In 2004, so-called Orange Revolution, inflicted by forced presidential election results, burst out in Ukraine. Carried out mostly by young people, students, frustrated with corrupted government formed by oligarchs, strongly connected with Russia. Revolution was successful, opposition candidate won. European Commission Loki started perceiving Ukraine as a prospective candidate to become part of the EU. The thing was, Viktor Yushchenko, the winning guy, turned out not that much different from Yanukovych, who came back to power in 2010 anyway. To, co mnie najbardziej męczy, to niesprawiedliwość. Ludzie pamiętają obietnicę prezydenta Wiktora Juszczenki, że bandyci będą siedzieć w więzieniach, a bandyci pozostali na swoich miejscach lub pozamieniali się fotelami. And only three years after that, we're in yet another revolution against the same guy as he refuses to sign association agreement with the EU. This one went down in history as Maidan or Euromaidan or Revolution of Dignity. Yet again, wave of protests is on the rise, quite brutally put down once, actually. And yet again, Yanukovych, along with his government, is overthrown. This time, big time. He has to run. And fun fact, his residency is now tourist attraction nearby Kiev, showing the overwhelming wealth Yanukovych was surrounding himself with. If you're wondering where he had so much money from, let me put it this way. His villa is now called Museum of Corruption. These are pictures of people helping a thief to steal. What's remarkable is that the thief was also the president of the country. Ukraine's former president Yanukovych fled to Russia in February 2014. He claimed to be in fear of his life, but despite this, he and his cronies carefully ensured they took as much as they could with them, filling trucks, cars, boats and helicopters with money and possessions. These are some of the things they took with them, and these are some of the things they had to leave behind. It's still not the end of hardships Ukraine has been through for past decade in relation with Russia, either through attempts to drift away from it or even experiencing actual aggression. In 2014, just a moment after Yanukovych escapes Ukraine, Russia invades Crimea and annexes it in a few months, getting even wider access to the Black Sea and gas and oil the area has to offer. Russia's excuse back then was similar to what we heard on the 24th of February 2022, when current invasion started. There were many Russians living in that area. Eastern part of the country is leaning towards Russia, language and culture-wise, unlike the western part of Ukraine that many consider to be the actual Ukraine. Local authorities in Crimea even put it up for a vote, whether Crimeans want to separate from Ukraine or not. Over 90% of people wanted to join Russia, however the referendum was condemned by international community as voting at a gunpoint. In the aftermath of Crimea annexation, protests fueled by Russian separatists started in the eastern part of the country. Actually, a very similar area that Russia flat out attacked first, now in 2022. It even involved taking down passenger flight, the infamous Malaysia Airlines flight, that was shot down by the separatist groups in an error. All in all, even though effect of this invasion wasn't internationally recognized, if you want to visit Crimea, you need a Russian visa. This time around, parts of Ukraine that are apparently Russian anyway are districts of Donetsk and Lugansk. As you can see, these parts are actually on the far east border of the country, so far away from Poland. Yet, Poles living nearby Poland's eastern border can hear bombings. So can citizens of Moldova, for instance.
There were some missiles spotted roaming the airspace above Ternopol district, more than halfway between Kiev, now being supposedly the main target, and Polish border. Poland has started working on facilities to welcome Ukrainian refugees. Let's set the bait over how Ukrainian refugees are better than the ones crossing Belarus border aside for now. Overall atmosphere is tense around Poland as well. My country has long history of hardships from Russia, just as Ukraine does. People already started hoarding gas stations and stocking up on fuel. Some gas stations ran out of supply already. Some increased prices like crazy. Many started allowing amount of gas per person up to certain quantity only. It's kinda understandable given over 60% of our fuel is supplied by Russia exactly. Fuel price increase is typically followed by all the basic goods price increase. We are not part of Eurozone and, as we know, unrest in a country usually results in currency depreciation. It is to be stressed that for past years Poland has been one of the main choice for Ukrainian immigrants to settle down in. There is a handful of people who, before Second World War, were living in Lviv and surrounding area, which back then was part of Polish territory and now is part of Ukraine. Large part of this group is also in Poland now. Our two countries, sharing a difficult history, have many links. Our colleagues at work have families in Ukraine, many of them completely lost contact with them, nobody picks up the phone. Painful part is ultimately everyone loses in the war. There always comes economic crisis in the aftermath, people lose their lives and livelihoods, on both sides. Has Russia crossed the line? Has it gone too far for NATO countries to come to terms with it? If so, wouldn't it be another sign for Putin that he can just keep taking parts of Ukraine here and there every few years? Neither solution seems to be good in truth. Escalation ends up in war, of course, as always concentrated in our region. Ignoring ends up in igniting Putin's appetite. I don't want to be over dramatic here, but looks like the Belle Epoque era is coming to an end for Central and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm.